Oh, okay. I love our theme music, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Evan and Aaron Show presents the Red and the Blue Live Soccer Chat. We are coming at you live in snow-torn or soon-to-be snow-torn central Indiana. As you can tell, some technical difficulties have struck the show and I am pretending to talk through my microphone, but I'm actually using a certain fruit um, tech company's uh, device here to uh, dial into the show. So, um, you know what? I'm going to try and keep my uh, my vocal tones uh, the same as usual, my friend. How you been? You doing all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm all right, man. It's, uh, snowpocalypse apparently is beginning. Uh, so <laughs> snow coming down. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. and we have plenty of rain and the temperatures are about to drop. So that means um, everything's just going to be a cold, icy mess. And nowhere is it going to be colder than in Minnesota this evening. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to say, let's not. Is later. Oh, my gosh. I've got so much to say, dude. I want to be playing in that match. Never mind. Oh. Spectator in the stands as I was the other night in Columbus, which was also very cold. Which, dude, you got to give us a lowdown on, man. You, you, you got to get us a lowdown. Well, absolutely. We'll get there in the second half. Uh, but let's jump in. Uh, got a little bit yeah. of reading to do before we get to the United States. So yep. uh, the I believe the day before our last podcast, uh, Chelsea had a bit of a wobble against, I believe, uh, Brentford, if it was Brentford. It, yeah. Brentford. Yeah, it was. Yeah, both of them. Both of them, actually. Brighton and Brentford. We uh, we kind of you know it just, we just were not playing no. well. No, we playing well. But since then, uh, you, you, they had one more match, as did United. Uh, they played uh, Chelsea played Spurs for the third time in approximately. I think that was about. Uh, I think it was about a two week two, two weeks three week period. No, and uh, it, that's not easy. That's not an easy run. But I tell you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I, I think Spurs will feel a little hard done by in that match. I think they played better than they had in the previous two matches, but I felt that it was yet again um, mostly Chelsea throughout that match. Yeah, uh, and really put the marker down early. Well, how did you feel about it? Was a good performance compared to the previous ones? I have one word for you: Ziek or Ziech, depending on yep. where you're from in the world i mean uh you know we we have here at the pod we have been hot and cold on him and, and i and i totally get the things that you were talking about earlier um before about him um but man uh, it, it's got to be a contender it's got to be a contender for goal of of the year in my opinion um don't you think the goal against Spurs. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. The curler. Okay, yes. I was thinking about yes, his, um, his previous one. Oh, and Evan Casey is gone, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no. yeah. No, I know. And, and, and once again, it is snowmageddon. So, hey, I, it, it says I'm trying to reconnect. There, there I am again, I guess. Interesting. Um, well, this, oh, is, this is the beauty, though, is having you, your audio uh, via the roadie. Uh, hopefully, we can keep <laughs> things going here. Um, there you go. Yes. Yeah. But, that goal from yeah, CX he, was um, top class and um, really reminiscent of, of a Di Maria type strike. Um, yes. His continuity in the team, I'm still questioning a little bit, but he is keeping our boy Polisic out with some good play right now. Well, you know, and, and, and oh, that was such a great segue into what I want to get into with the USM, uh, USMNT, but I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it for that. Chelsea. Um, Chelsea seems to be riding the ship. Um, there was a lot of uh, a lot of things I want to say, you know, um, about Tuchel uh, as far as excuses go. You know, we were talking about a month ago about him making excuses for the team and them still kind of being silent about or not silent, but being tired about things. And you know, that got to be old. 
it just got to be old after a while. And it's like, come on, man, you know, if, if we're not able, if we're not able to keep up with teams, um, th- th- mm-hmm. then that points, that points to conditioning that points to the manager that points to you, Tuchel. And I think that, um, by shifting the lineup and, and making you know, ZS, ZS come in and really, really showcase, allowing him to create, allowing him to do what he does um, so well um, is absolutely amazing. And there I go again. I am gone again, but I'm back, I think. Um, You're still on but, my screen. Keep going. We've okay, got, okay, we've got your on. audio no matter what, buddy. Okay, yeah, there you go. So anyway, that you know that that was huge. Um, you know, Thiago Silva, mm. the guy is and he's a freaking national treasure, and I you know, and and he is a national treasure for every nation on this planet. Well, I just <laughs> I just want to say he did make. I, I mean, the goal was nice, but I mean, he had to make a miraculous recovery from the absolute assault from Harry Kane. Yes. But, yes. But, now. now- Okay, okay, but 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 let me say this. Let me say this. He did. He made a recovery, and I agree with every single. No, 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 no. no. Um, I agree with every every single commentator that said that Harry Kane pushed the guy. Now, how hard did he push him? I don't know. But Tiago Silva is such a veteran. He's such. He knows the game. Oh, He's yeah. like, I'm going to get this call. And so you can't fault him for that. You're going to get it every time. No no you're, question you're, about it. Right. You're going to get it. Just uh, an interesting turn of events. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. I think if Kane scores there, um, the best Chelsea could uh, probably hope for was a was a draw. Um, because I think that energizes – it energizes Spurs. You know, they, they play tough. I, I think, once again, Ziyech – you, you're not going to stop that. You're not going to stop that shot. I, I don't know. Very beautiful rip. Yeah, yeah you're, you're not going to stop that one. So I, I think I think you get a draw. But right. once again, I think we can chalk this one up to mm-hmm. Thiago Silva and his his awareness. Yeah. Oh, his sure. Absolute sure. Absolute awareness. Because yes. that I, I'm going to I'm going to compliment you, my friend. That was a that was a freaking Aaron Gordon veteran move right there, bro. I mean, I that mean, was like an AG special. Like, oh, oops, gotta, sorry, man. You got to use all all uh, facets uh, of the game. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Here's what I find funny: um, if that had been the other way around, and that's Harry Kane chasing a ball down in the in the box, and he gets a little shove from behind, you don't get a penalty for that. Uh man, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, think, they would, I think the referee and, and all the commentators so you're would, saying, would you're say saying, that's soft. I think you're saying would, that it was it was it was Stanford Bridge home, you know, cooking. No, no, no. okay, okay. Not at all. I'm saying that um, there are places on the field and situations in the game that are not called the same way. Oh, 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 what is got a happening echo. there? I didn't get an echo. Um, okay. We're back. We're good. You know, in, in, if a d- defender's shielding a ball out of bounds and he stops short on a guy and gets run over from behind, always gets that call. If that's, okay. an, if that's an attacker, typically don't get that call. If, hmm. there's, if there's a head, you know, if two guys go up and clash in the center circle, the, they call a foul. Two guys go up in the box and, and clash, Typically not a foul called, and it's even if it's Harry Kane, even if it's Harry Kane. I I I think it's a, a, a culture. I think it's the culture of the game, how the how referees call the game right now, especially in England. Maybe okay. maybe it, the other way around, they call that in in another league. Um, but no, I I and I'm not mad about it. It's yeah. just the reality of the game. I know as an attacker, I have to. And and I'm not defending diving in any way, but if you no want, no 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 no, you want to know why guys exaggerate? It's because guy a guy like a a Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo, <laughs> yeah, he didn't go down. He was he was built like a tree trunk, right? He began taking a lot of lumps, and you realize after a while you have to exaggerate the foul because if you stay on your feet, the referee's not going to pull it back to a penalty. 
So right. you do want to exaggerate a little bit. You want to make sure the referee sees the foul is, is, is how you mm -hmm. put it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, uh, I've talked about it with friends of mine for a long time. It's just a part of the game. And Tiago Silva knew it. He knew in that moment all he had to do was use Harry Kane's momentum against him. Harry Kane didn't shove yeah. him. Harry Kane just put a hand out. All he did was put a hand out. And Tiago did the rest. Wait, he, let gravity, <laughs> he let gravity do the rest. He, he, yeah. Absolutely smart play. Absolutely smart play. I'm, yep. I'm just it, I'm having a little banter. <laughs> I, no, no, no. Hey, I love it. I love that banter, dude, because once again, you know, Chelsea, and first of all, uh, you know, I, I got to show it off, bro. Got to show it off. Um, picked this up just the other day. Ooh, lovely. The Lunar New Year, buddy. Yes, sir. Right there. Right there. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so I was very, very happy to get that. Uh, just got it today. Warm up kits the other day like that. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, really yeah. United did this a few years back. Um, I, th I think it was the first year they had switched back to Adidas, and they had some really, really cool merch. Um, nice. I, I, I dig it. I'm all for it. Nice. Um, um yeah. No, I, I was gonna. I was gonna say. I'm like, you know, Chelsea really has been kind of quiet during this trade. Um, you know, transfer window. Uh, you know, not a lot going on at all. Um, no matches. Uh, anything like that. Uh, Edward Mindy uh, and um, Senegal are in the final. So yay, woohoo! Um, Got how about Argyle coming up in the oh, yeah, well, at the weekend. Argyle, I got Argyle. Got to believe this is an opportunity for Tuchel to put out a, a mixed squad, a, a strong enough squad. Sure, I think, sure. I think anybody who got a lot of time uh, on internationals mm -hmm. uh, over this break, and it's been interesting if you've noticed. This has been mainly World Cup qualifying for South America, CONCACAF, and Asia. Yeah. In the African Cup of Nations going on. Uh, the Europeans really haven't done a whole lot. They've not really had a lot of games going on. So the European contingent for, for both clubs should come back fairly fresh and, and mm -hmm. ready to go. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Or, um, yeah. yeah. You, you should expect to beat Plymouth Argyle. You're at home. They're a small right. club. I, honestly, I think they might be in League One. I'm not sure. I'd have to double-check that. Um, your match with Arsenal has been postponed. I'm not sure why. I think it might be a schedule. Um, Scheduling conflict. Suggestion. Yeah, I, th I think mm -hmm. so. I mm -hmm. looked it up for Arsenal, so I'm not sure what else. But th this time of year, this sort of stuff happens, and especially because of all the COVID. Uh, sure. So uh, we will have another show by the time, uh, but before you guys play again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cup game at the weekend, um, and then you've got Crystal Palace on the nineteenth. The nineteenth, and so you know, we like I said, it it, it bodes well for us. Um, we we have a nice little break here. Um, however, I want to I want to switch from the blue to the red. Um, my man, what? I, I mean, I know that has there there been two matches, correct? Two matches since our last podcast, but. There you go. Um, no, no. Uh, no, nope, just one. Just one. Uh, Manchester United played the West, West Ham game, and dude, um, it was. I, 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 go ahead. I gotta get you. I gotta get your take, dude. I gotta get your take. I, here's here's what I saw, and I, I wanted to once again see what you what you think. Um, I saw a Man U team who was playing you know, the number four team, you know, in, 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 you know, in the premier league and they played them tough. And when the chips were on the board, you had to feel good about seeing who finally scored the goal to, to win. I mean, for talk, talk a little bit about, first of all, what you saw in that match because what I saw in that match were two clubs who were who were battling it out, who were you know, who were pretty well matched. Um, but how big was that goal for Marcus Rashford? How big was that goal for him? Well, I think you know it, it's it's a second goal in two consecutive games. Um, you could see the look on his face; he was smiling. Uh, you, you know his his demeanor had been his body language had been kind of negative you could see him throw his hands up a couple times um in, in the previous couple of matches 
um, you know, some people criticizing him for, you know, you kind of kind of said, you know, why didn't you play me the ball when a guy took the shot? Well, the goalkeeper spilled that shot and he maybe could have gotten to it. I'm not going to be as critical. Um, Marcus is trying to play his way back into to form at a time while the team is trying to find its identity. Um, yeah. And, you know, what sucks for Marcus is for the vast majority of his professional career with Manchester United, he's been playing in a club trying to find its identity. And um, I think this game was slowly but surely a step closer to finding that. Um, I think you started to see the guys have a better understanding of when and where and how they should be pressing. Um, and you could see the, the intensity and momentum building up. And it was, it was great to see, you know, a, a late Old Trafford goal. I mean, the fans love nothing yeah. more. And if you watch that, all the, all the stars – uh, were, were involved in that play. Even the guy who we're sending out on loan now, uh, Anthony Martial, did a great job. Uh, you know, the, the ball got played forward. Defender inadvertently kind of head, slip-headed it on because he was caught underneath it, played it directly right. to Ronaldo. Ronaldo plays in Martial, and uh, then Martial slips in Cavani around the corner, borderline, mm -hmm. borderline offside. Um, but... Uh, but ultimately, ah, there, yeah. ultimately viewed to be uh, even. And then he slides it across for Marcus, uh, Marcus for, for a tap in. Uh, and, and Marcus yeah. does the running. Marcus loves to do that kind of running. Of course, he'd like to get the ball from 30 yards and whack a shot in. That's, they, you know, that's, sure. that's exciting for him. But that's also, you know, him getting in the box. That's, that's bread and butter, too. And it right. was really nice to see all four of those guys. I mean, you look at the attacking talent. Uh, at United's disposal and you got to say well if you're going to score and let's have them all involved so we got to right. see that that was a that was a good thing it was a good relief uh, for the crowd um, good for Rangnick um, good for um, Marcus and, and, and Cavani um, yep. you know there's 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 reason to have a little bit of hope uh, uh, around the grounds um, our our games coming up are, are winnable we've got the FA Cup uh, against Burra on Friday mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. four days later, we're at Burnley. That could be a banana peel. No question. Uh, then sure. we've got Southampton at home and, uh, Brighton and Hove at home. And, you know, uh, at this point with the way United are playing fragile mindset, trying to learn a new system, all that, all these games are banana peels, but they're also opportunities against slightly smaller teams that maybe don't have the quality, right? They're, they've got the team chemistry and they, and they're going to fight, you know, they're going to fight. But they don't yep. quite yep. have the quality to, to hurt you. So they can try to establish these patterns of play, these pressing patterns, winning the ball back in the hot zones and trying to do what it is Rangnick wants. And all I want it from this point forward in, in, in the season is for the performances themselves to begin to get better and the results to, to stay consistent. Yeah, so We're going yeah. to drop some points here and there, but – United at their have been at their best against the big teams this year. Take that Liverpool game out, and they pre played pretty well against bigger clubs. Um, and uh, you know, I, I wish I didn't have to keep saying we got to have patience, but I'm not in charge. Of, you know, I'm not on the board. I don't get to decide. <laughs> You're not. Have, Wait, you know, what? Have these managers coming and going and that kind of decision making, um, but. <laughs> You know, there have been some good moves. Martial going to Sevilla on loan. Donny Van de Beek going to Everton on loan. By right. the way, Van de Beek, very reminiscent as a player of Frank Lampard, and he will get to play for him. Uh, and uh, There you go. Ali Ali as well. So uh, two pretty good, um, technically gifted midfielders there playing for arguably one of the best English midfielders of all time. I think that's a good combo. Um, Dude. Um, a lot, not a lot of movement for Manchester United. Right, right. There's another thing I want to talk about, though, uh, about Man U and, and about that, that West Ham match. Ronaldo, um, one of the, obviously, you know, one of the, if not the best football players of, of, of all time. I, I don't think I've ever seen a better delivery in the box than what Bruno Fernandez set him up with in the first half of that match. And he just, he couldn't get to it. You know, is, is that, is that, was that, was that Ronaldo not anticipating that was him? Was that not him not being able to get to it? Because I'm like, I, I don't know. 
I don't know if you could have struck that any better, dude. That that was beautiful. No, and, you know, sometimes you hit a really, really nice ball and it's, it's, you know, an inch or two off, uh, you know, and, yeah. and, and maybe Ronaldo was a split second late and reacting to it. I mean, there's a lot of the, the interesting thing about soccer and especially if you've you know, been a fan of it for a long time and, and you, you know, really get into the intricacies, mm-hmm. um, you know, sometimes there's amazing plays that go on that don't result in anything. They don't make the highlight. Sure, sure didn't end up in a, didn't even end up in a shot on goal much less you know a goal um but, but boy that one was beautiful dude I, got, I played a game last night and and we had a phenomenal move that almost ended up in a goal for the other team oh wow okay so, sometimes it happens um you know i i think bruno and 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 uh cristiano they're friends they're you know portuguese national team teammates i think they've got a really good rapport going just kind of get out of their way and let them do what they do um you know we've we've got to use the squad that's available to us and hopefully just keep picking up the points you know we this put us in the top four yeah yeah well ladies and gentlemen what that has done is that has brought us to the halftime part of our uh show and um what we do at this point is we take a halftime shot halftime shot Stop, my friend. Um, what, who do you have today? What do you, who are you going to um, toast to tonight? Um, you know, in honor of it being Black History Month, um, I'm going to give a shout out uh, to all of uh, the the players of color that have broken barriers, uh, mm. especially uh, in, in soccer. Uh, I, I know we've had various. Um, a, a, a lot of our players of color, you know, uh, come, you know, come from abroad as well. Um, but I, I think this, the sport of soccer at its best can be a, a unifying thing in this world. Um, yep. and I think it's a good thing. They do the stamp out racism. So just shout out to, um, all, all the, uh, players of color that, um, are, are plying their trade all around the world, especially in the premier league, our boys, um, mm. and, uh, I got a buddy who got the, uh, what, uh, Jaden Bukeo and, uh, um, uh, Marcus shirt after they got, you know, abused at a, at a match. So, um, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's important to recognize and, uh, you know, um, for as long as we have to talk about it, we should talk about it. Eventually this won't be a thing, but yep. uh, until it isn't to those guys and gals. Slinty. Hmm. Woo-hoo. And real quick, before we jump in uh, to the Yanks, just want to say elephant in the room. Obviously, Man U is dealing with a very sensitive issue with Mason Greenwood. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's horrible news. I don't think anybody's defending it. The club is, has, has done and said the right things thus far. Um, you know, I think by and large, especially in England, they have to wait a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm sure he's got some sort of clause in his contract saying he can't, you know, bring disrepute on Manchester United. I'm sure at a club like that, they do. But in the meantime, you know, he's not allowed to come to the training ground and, and it looks bad. It looks really, really bad. Yeah, it does. And, uh, it, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame for everybody involved. You know, he's a promising young, um, player. Um, but that does a disservice to potentially the victim here. Uh, and, uh, you know, she doesn't. Yeah. If this is all true, she doesn't deserve any of that either. So, you know, I, I'm hoping for the best outcome, but I, I, I fear the worst here. Um, and yeah, yeah. Uh, all, all I can hope is that the club does the right thing um, mm-hmm. when, when the time comes. So, yeah, man. Um, on, yeah. On, um, the U.S. men's national team. Oh, my God. Currently in second place. Yeah. Qualifying with one more game to go in this current cycle. Or I'm sorry, in this current window, and then they will play three more matches after that to decide. Um, I was at the match in Columbus for El Salvador last Thursday. Um, beautiful stadium, by the way. If you haven't seen the video oh. that I posted, absolutely. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. We need to go to a Columbus crew match, dude. Sure. I mean, we, need, we need to go. Absolutely. Um, beautiful stadium. I, you know, I, I, for one, 
thought that the U.S. played okay. A lot of people were kind of down on them. I actually thought, I mean, they dominated possession, but the problems they encountered against Canada and that Canada exploited uh, were a bit obvious in that first match. Um, in the first half, uh, you know, we watched Anthony Robinson drift out wide, receive the ball, get forward, all very good things. And then his final delivery was just terrible. Um, and if, if this is going to be the way we play, he's, he's got to find guys on the end of it. You know, you can, you can say all you want that, Hey, Zeus Ferreira should have done a bit more with his opportunities and he should have, and perhaps another striker, a, a Pepe, maybe even Jazzy Zardes may have finished those. Um, but we should have been one or two up at halftime, but you could also see how wide open we were to the counter attack. You could see how slow and ponderous we were in, in the middle and final third at times. Um, our big name players did not live up to their big names. And um, ultimately, you know, we got a one nothing victory out of it. But Canada watched that film. And Canada came out with a plan. And Canada executed. And, the, you know, look, we got to stop saying, Oh, we got it's embarrassing and humiliating to lose to Canada. They're number one in this region for a reason, right? Now. Yes. You know, yes, they are. What no. was embarrassing was the performance, was the attitude and behavior of the players, and quite frankly, the 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 failure of so many big names to step up and lead. And yes. I found that to be the worst aspect of it. What was your takeaway? Well, my takeaway is this is that um I am I am blue through and through. I am a Chelsea guy, no matter what. Um, two things about Burhalter. I'll go with the good first. Um, he is uh, starting Pulisic on the bench tonight. I think that needs to happen. Um, I think that, you know, he got in that Canada match, he got beat up. And, and I think that because he got beat up, it affected the entire team. I think the team saw what Canada was doing to Pulisic. And here's, here's my, my thing, Aaron, and, and you know, like, like once again, I, I coached. It was terrible coaching, but I played indoor too. And any time that you got really physical with one of my guys – I got in your face. Like, I got in your face. I was like, dude, what the hell? Pulisic got manhandled at some points during that first half, and nobody, nobody showed any type of emotion when it happened. Um, so I, I said the exact same thing. I, I'm like, an enforcer, somebody, what? Mix it up. Where is where you know where is our Clint Dempsey? Where's our Dempsey that comes in and just be, you know is like what the, you know what's what's going on? We we don't have that. No. Um, and so so Pulisic was not sharp. He underperformed, and you know the fact is is that he has been labeled as the golden child. You know, cap you know Captain America. Uh, when, when you carry that label. And and you acknowledge that label. Now it'd be different if he's like, you know, no, 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 no. You know, but but he he doesn't deny it. He doesn't deny that label. You better show up and you better bring to the table something better than what you did, you know, when when, when we when we played Canada. Because that that was just that was, I, I they played okay with El Salvador. Okay. But here's the things I saw in that match. I saw I saw cracks in the dam. I was like, okay, look, this is yes, it's El Salvador. But the other thing that I want to talk about too is why the hell? And I get it, but I think it's kind of underhanded a little bit. And let me let me explain. Why the hell are we playing in northern cities just to get an advantage on teams that we should beat anyway? Why aren't we? playing in Orlando? Why aren't we playing in San Antonio? Why aren't we playing in Sacramento where our guys who are better footballers can put on a show 
if they cannot beat, if they if they can't beat El Salvador in Sacramento, how in the hell are we going to beat Egypt in Qatar? How are we going to beat England in Qatar? Because we're not just trying to make the World Cup. I don't know any team on the planet trying to make the World Cup. Everybody's trying to win the freaking World Cup. So why in the world are we playing these little teams in, 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 in making an advantage and putting our own players at risk, Aaron? I mean, think about it. How many people have been injured? Maybe not on our you know, U.S. national team, but what we know is when players play in cold weather, you risk even your, your risk grows even greater for injury. Why are we doing this? This is this is in my opinion, and maybe I'm overreacting about this. Maybe I'm having a Stephen A. moment, but this is disgraceful. I think I think that Spain looks at this. I think that you know Italy looks at this. France looks at this and goes, "What you have to basically play in negative temperatures or in snow just to qualify." For the World Cup, if we can't qualify for the World Cup in in perfect pitch conditions, we don't need to qualify. We don't need to qualify. Well, there's a lot to unpack. And and the most basic response to that is you're absolutely right. We should be able to play on in in any city and deal with the majority of CONCACAF. Um, Absolutely. Why, you know, so the history is that if we play in the southern cities and before they had lottery and and these games were guaranteed to be sellouts, the problem was that they weren't home games. When we would play Mexico in in Dallas or El Salvador in Dallas, um, it's not. I totally get it. I totally get it, man. But it's it's not going to be a home home game in Qatar either. (laughs) Okay. Okay. But hold on. Hold on. Let's be realistic. Okay. Okay. It was a problem for a long time when these games weren't guaranteed sellouts that if we went to play El Salvador and Miami, it was 70-30 Hispanic fans. You can't do no, Evan. No, no. Aaron, you can't at do this level, at this level, bro. I mean, li- no, listen, no, if it was, if it was, if it was, look, if it was Cincinnati Bible College. <laughs> you know, playing you guys, I, I, I don't, I don't agree with that, man. Because if you can't, if you can't tune that out as a professional athlete, I mean, listen, the we're 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 getting ready. No, dude, 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 we're getting ready to see something amazing happen in American football. The small, t- <laughs> the the small budget team, Cincinnati Bengals, mm. are going to the freaking Super Bowl and played played the visitor every time they played Stop. now i get it it's two different sports two totally different sports and but- it also you can't use american football as any sort of counterbalance because american football is essentially communism <laughs> no no other major league in america <laughs> sharing the way they do they go okay to- i get it i get it no such thing as a small market team I, I just it, baseball is the one to use for that, but no, I mean, come on, Evan, it, you would not agree to let Chelsea play an entire season of games away from Stanford bridge. There's value in playing at home. Right, right, right. But what I'm saying is this, what I'm saying is, is it okay? You're playing at, at Stanford, but probably the, the conditions are going to be the same at Manchester at Leeds you know, they're, they're, they're going to be the same. The, the, the weather's going to be the, Settling the conversation here because there's no, two, no, we are. There's because there's two different things at play here. OK, we don't need to worry about the number of fans and stuff anymore because there's a lottery system. We could play these games in Miami or Dallas mm-hmm. or anywhere around the country because they're going to sell out. So there's a lottery system in place. We don't need to worry about that. It's gamesmanship and it's always been gamesmanship. And here's the here's what is unique to the United States versus everybody else. If you go play Mexico, you almost always play them at the Azteca in Mexico City. Sure, if you right. Go play Brazil. You play them at the Maracanã in I think Rio. 
Yep, most, yep. most countries are not the size of the United States and therefore play the vast majority of their qualifying matches at one particular stadium. I the agree. The United agree. States has a model where they're trying to grow the game, spread it around, and they've found these pockets. The reason why you play this game in, in Columbus is because, is because historically, for 20 years now, Columbus shows out. That crowd right, right. is outstanding. Now, it was cold, and that's a pain in the ass, but look at your history. At least three of our Dos Aceros are at Columbus in the snow, man. So okay. History's on our side. Are you, are you simultaneously correct that it's, it, we should be able to beat these teams no matter where they play them, but also that we, we, we do this for reasons uh, that are different than other national teams. England plays all their home games at Wembley. Right. They have, they have a consistent venue. The United States only uses Carson, California when it's time for the World Cup. We don't Which, have a national stadium. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I get that, Aaron. I, I totally get it. What I think my point is, is that no matter where you play, you should beat these teams. And if you can't beat these teams, then you, you have no reason qualifying. I, I just don't understand why do you take it to Minneapolis when this Minneapolis is not sold out? It's maybe half capacity. Half. As of yesterday. Now, today, maybe, maybe, it, you know, it all gets Columbus. And, and okay. You're not getting but, a lot of pushback from me on, on, on this point. I'm right, just, right. You're, you're asking the question as if you're surprised by it, and this is something that they've always done. They've just yeah, no. Done it. I'm, not, I'm not surprised by it. Right. But what I'm saying is, is that it's time to really start looking and say, okay, how much longer are we going to keep up this process? Is this really, I mean, are we really doing a service to our players? Are, I mean, are we? Are we able to see the best out of, you know, I, I mean, I mean, come on. Are we, are we able to see the best out of Ricardo Pepe? Are we able to see the best out of Weston McKinney? Are we able to see the best out of Christian Pulisic in, in, in minus 14 degree weather? That's what I'm saying. And, and, and that's, a, that's absolutely fair. Um, I, I don't I don't have a good response to that. Yeah, no, no. In this, yeah, I'm I'm just sort of used to this being the way it is, and mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm frustrated by it. But I also like that I get to go to Columbus, Ohio, and watch a game. And sure. because of how the calendar is, most of those games aren't gonna be at a time of year where it's seventy and sunny in Columbus. Yeah, but no, I get that, but. but there's a reason that if the United States is going to play in Mexico City, they spend the three weeks before it training in Denver. They train at altitude and get used to it. Sure. And every, every team around the world does stuff like this. Every, every club ball, club sport does stuff like this. Dude, they used to soak the nets in basketball. So if you hit a jumper, it would hang the net, and the other team couldn't run on you. They used to drag the infield, spray it, drag the infield, spray yeah. it. The so ground balls went slower. Sure. If you're playing against a ground ball team, you want, you want dry grass and wet dirt. Every sport, everybody is looking to gain an advantage. And sometime a long time ago, somebody in U.S. soccer said, this does it for us. And if – if you can't look at U.S. soccer and see that our leadership is poor and this is why decisions like this continue, yeah. I, mean, I, I feel your pain. Yeah. I've just made my peace with it because I don't expect it to change anytime soon. And, and you know what? Honestly, you, you are hey, my right. friend. I mean, it's, it's just, once again, it's, it's being relatively new, you know, three, four years really solidly into the sport. Sure. Um, it just it just hit me. I was like, wait, why 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 are we doing? I, I if if I want to go see a match, you're and you're right. You know, if if they play in Columbus, yeah, of course I want them to play April through October. 
you know, April through October, let's do a friendly or something like that. Yeah, sure. I get it. Um, but if I want to go see a match, I want to see what our guys can really do, you know, and, and I want to see that. And it's like, it's sad that no, it's not sad. I, Cause I get your point. I do get your point about advantage. I get that. Um, but man, I just, I, I wrestle with the fact, does it, does it really do our guys a service? Does it really do? No, not at this point. It does. Yeah. It doesn't help. It doesn't help at all. Um, you know, we've got a lot of European based guys that play in England and Germany and Holland, you know, yeah. Northern, Northern, Western Europe. Um, right. So I think the the hope is they're just, they're kind of used to it. It's not a big deal to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I gotta believe Ricardo Pepe doesn't want to be playing in Minnesota the kids from fucking Dallas, Texas, Sydney. Exactly. And he's, he's, and, and you know what the kid, this is the other thing I want to say. And then, then, you know, we can, we can wrap up the show, but why, 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 why? Ricardo Pepe in the last four matches has scored three goals for you. And the kid is struggling right now in Germany. He's struggling. His club is struggling. He's playing. Okay. He's playing okay, but but his club is struggling. And and you could have given him. You could have given him. him. Okay. Uh, an incredible boost. An incredible like shot to the system. It, start him at El Salvador. Why didn't you start him, Berhalter? At, at you know, at, I, I, I think I think that and this is indicative of, of the way I feel about Berhalter right now. The guy had the nerve to come on. TV and say that we dominated the Canada match. Possession wise, they did, but to the naked I, eye, to, to the naked eye, I, honestly, I don't think you needed to even be that big of a soccer fan to watch that match and say uh, the guys wearing the black uniforms are kicking the shit out of the guys in the white uniforms. It, it, that, exactly. You know, and, and Aaron, I wanted I wanted to get your take on that because I'm like, okay, I I. Other than time of possession and shots on goal. <laughs> that wasn't a stat for the U.S. either. Uh, well, uh, domination? Domination. No. Well, you know, Burhalter is the kind of guy who thinks he has to put a particular spin on things. Um, you know, his brother was originally part of how he probably got this job in the first place. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't have, I don't have a personal dislike of Greg Berhalter. I just no. don't think he's quite good enough for the job. He might be really good as an assistant coach, you know, somebody to help out with tactics mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. He, doesn't, he doesn't seem to be a big enough personality to be yeah. the manager yeah. of the United States national team. The bigger question and the question I've been asking for years of everybody yeah. who bitches and moans, who realistically do you want to come take this job that is both qualified and available mm-hmm. and wants to coach the U.S. national team? This isn't this isn't a high profile job. This isn't no. PSG where you're getting to coach Messi, right? You're right. taking on a project here. Mm. Now, on the one That's, hand, you yeah. look at and say, "Oh my God, the, this player what? pool is awesome. We've we've got we've got guys at every position starting for major clubs in Europe. Guys playing right, major. right. On the other hand, you say, "Yeah, but beyond your first fifteen, everybody else is second tier. Maybe some tryhards that'll help you out. And by the way." all those top level players you got play in different leagues. Man, here, here's, here's my, here's the issue I have with that. And it's not you. It's just, it's just that statement is that, you know, you're taking on a project. How can the men's U S men's soccer team be a project for since, you know, Bob Bradley back in 20, you know, 2006, like, Jurgen Klinsman, we said the same thing about him. It's a, it's a project. Bruce Arena, it's a project. You know, both times Arena was here. 
I'm like, when does it stop becoming a, it's, it's almost like the U S men's soccer team. And this kills me, Aaron, to say this, and you're going to laugh so hard. The U S men's soccer team sounds a lot like the Cleveland Browns. It's, it's like, when, when are they going to not be a project? Like, when is it, when is it finally going to come together? I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I have <laughs> oh man ladies and gentlemen look no. literally the same shit and yeah at, at the end of the day the reality might be that for as good as we get we're just never going to get there because the rest of yeah. the world doesn't stop playing soccer while we try to get better <laughs> the, the, Bra- we, the brazilians ask? don't just take a break for a while <laughs> they keep churning out hey. badass ballers Hey, hey, Neymar, can you like go, you know, like right? be an accountant for like three, four years? That'd be great. We appreciate United that. United States yeah. and obviously Canada recently, <laughs> but you look at, at, at the progress of, uh, of Japan and Korea and Australia yeah. and New Zealand. Oh, yeah. Teams, you know, countries have made progress, um, but the rest of the world didn't stop. So no. when, when are we going to win a World Cup? Man, but- I don't think we're going to win a World Cup. I, I would say we need we need Frank Lampard as our as our manager right now. That's what we need. We need, we need Frank. That's what we need. I, yeah. Anyway. I, if if I could choose anybody <laughs> I wanted, Jose. Money was no object to come in for the US national team. Yeah. I legit have no idea I would choose. I, I really n- no clue whatsoever because who do you build the team around at this point? What type of yeah. system do you play? What is our strength? What is our weakness? Mm-hmm. I've, I've been at this for a long time. Still don't know. Because I, I tell you what, you look back at, at certain teams that had success, and the talent that's available on this team is as good as it's ever been. But I, I, I would I agree wanted, with that. Absolutely. If you wanted to win a match, you'd grab that 2000, what, 2002. 2002. Japan Korea World Cup team. Those guys fought. Those guys were killers. And then they turned around and lost their shit in 2006 <laughs> and didn't do all that great in 2010. I mean, we're all over the place. Yeah. We, don't yeah. quali- we don't qualify for the Olympics, so our youth program doesn't do well. We're still on this this pay for play system bullshit. I mean, yep. Yep. we need IO to begin weighing in on this. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah, man. Beyond I, that, I, 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 I and, and in honor of Io, I want to say this: uh, today, M- Manchester United and Chelsea played each other in the Women's League Cup. Oh, none of us watched it because it wasn't on TV. Nope. Chelsea won three to one. Uh, all goals scored in the first half. Pernil Harder and Jesse Fleming made it 2-0 early. Vilda Boarisa brought one back for United to make it two one. And Jessica Carter got a one to make it three one before the half, uh, before playing out a stalemate. Chelsea moves on. I believe that was a quarterfinal. Uh, some man you knocked out there. Um, good on Chelsea women. Um, continuing yeah. where they left off uh, last season, um, and it's good to see. So yeah, man. Yeah, um, folks, we've got about eight minutes until kickoff. This this is <laughs> this is a must win. Um, let's hope the Hondurans really, 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 really hate cold weather. And at least yeah. a handful of our guys um, remember to wear their Under Armour. So, uh, Evan, <laughs> hey. Evan, give me your prediction. Give me your uh, prediction. Well, that, that was going to be the, the final segment of the show, ladies and gentlemen, the hate Ooh, Aaron yeah. segment. Um, I was going to just throw it out there for you, my friend. I was going to get your prediction. Um, my prediction is 3-1 um, U.S. I think it'll be uh, a crazy sloppy match because um, it's going to be so freaking cold. Yep. Uh, but um, there's, I don't think there's any snow up there. I think it all nope, is just minus down. 15 at kickoff. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I, I think it'd be 3 1. Um, I think that, uh, you know, on, honestly, I think that, that Pepe will score. I think he'll show that, the, that he needs to be starting. Um, I think that Pulisic, um, I, I think this will light a fire underneath him and, and, and he may come in, um, later. And I think that he will score. Uh, so there you go. 
that's that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna say. And Aronson may get subbed in too, and he may score. Those there's those, they're my three scores right there. I think we'll we'll spread them out. So go ahead. What do you think, man? It's funny. My heart, my heart says three one. I want to believe that they're gonna come out with energy and passion and realize that this has to be a statement game. And realistically, they just can't keep clean sheets. They'll, they'll get themselves open, exposed. It'll probably be late because guys are pushing forward, looking for more, trying to yeah. go for it because we're not mature. Um, <laughs> my, head, my head says 1-1. One, one. Aaron, why? You, you've got to give like a minute synopsis on why you think that is, man. Come on. Uh, because nothing about recent performances tell me that somebody's going to step up and be a leader. And while I think the cold is probably going to have an impact on Honduras and we're probably, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually gave up a stupid goal early on, got the goal back and then just couldn't find another one because we just don't have enough going forward in that respect. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I think this is a team that is teetering one way or the other. And mm. um, I'm, I'm just not sure I see anything uh, that makes me believe. I don't think they're going to fall apart. I don't think we're going to lose the match, um, but they just look so disjointed. So, yeah, man. Okay. All right. Well, Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Get your drink on, uh, get curled up on the couch. Cause <laughs> God damn, these guys look cold as they are walking out. Like I, <laughs> these guys have on snow jackets. <laughs> Seriously. Are you watching this? They're walking out in snow jackets. These guys look like I'm they're going to go do like a half pipe in a minute. <laughs> I'm getting ready to run upstairs and check it out, man. No, this uh, is ladies nuts. and gentlemen. Yep, hit that, hit that theme music, baby. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for, yeah, USA, USA. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, we appreciate you. We love all of you. There you go. Um, thank you so much. We, uh, we love each and every one of you. And uh, go USA. And finally, USA. USA. And you know what? I always say at the end, black people vote. Black people vote. Happy Black History Make Month. Sure you vote. Mm. Get it on. All right, my friend. See you.